regathering. We are going to start regathering at church in person very soon, and phase one is going to look a certain way. So let's talk about what it's going to look like. Before we get into the nitty gritty of things, I would like to talk about some housekeeping issues. The first is that these phase one changes will only affect Sunday worship service. So what that means is that youth and children's ministries will continue to be entirely online and we will still be having our normal live streams of the service so that if you don't come in person, it's okay. You can still live stream from the safety of your couch. Second, both services are going to shift their start times in order to accommodate the fact that we need to set up and clean up in between services. So English service will begin at 9.15 and Chinese service will begin at 11.15. And lastly, each service is going to only allow 50 people to attend in person. There's going to be a pre-registration, which we will talk about how to do. And we will continue to enforce social distancing and masking protocols uh, for the in-person gatherings. So here is what the rest of this time is going to look like. This is how I'm going to orient you. First, we're going to talk about how to pre-register. The second is we're going to talk about what it's going to look like to attend the service in person. And then third, we're going to talk about precautions that we've put in case. So. First, let's talk about how you can register for this. We're going to be using Eventbrite to host. There's going to be a registration link that's going to be sent out one week prior to service. So check your emails. So you're, when you open the link, you'll be sent to this page. Please make sure that you go through the documents right here on the left. That's the phase one attendee guidelines document and the CCGC Sunday service liability statement. Please, please, please read them. After that, go ahead and click the register button. Notice this big yellow arrow and notice my mouse hovering around here. Very good. So when you get to this page, you may be tempted to click this button that says get tickets. But let me tell you right now, don't press that button. Instead, follow this yellow arrow and click the buy on map button. So seating groups are going to be limited to two or three people. So if your group is going to be larger than three, please separate your group accordingly. I will discuss that on the next slide. And just in case you forgot, we do not have separate youth or children's programs on campus at this time. So if you plan to come in person, your kids need to stay with you at all times. There is no cry room available. They just have to sit with you through service. So please keep that in mind before you register. Now, what does it look like to pick your seats? So you can look at the seats on the chart. The ones that are blue are the ones that you can pick. Gray circles are not available for you to pick. So as you select your seats, it's going to pop up on the right hand side of the screen, uh, the, the seats that you picked. So please remember that if you are a group of one, uh, you can reserve a two seater and congratulations, you get two seats. If you are a group of four, please reserve two sets of two seats, preferably next to each other. And then if you are a group of five, go ahead and reserve one set of two seats and one set of three seats. And beyond that, you can do the math for yourself. After you have made your selection, go ahead and click that big red checkout button. And after you've done that, you can fill in your contact information. You can confirm that you've read the statements that we asked you to read earlier, and you can click the register button. So. What happens when you actually come to church? Well, this is what's going to happen. It may not be Ross himself who greets you, but someone is going to greet you and they're going to check your name against the registration list. And assuming that you actually RSVP'd, you will be directed to your appropriate entrance. And at the entrance, someone is going to take your temperature and then direct you to your seat. And just so you know, we're going to be entering the sanctuary from two different sides. If you're in the left section, you will be going in from the left side. And if you're in the right section, you'll be going from the back of the building. And again, someone is going to direct you. So don't even worry about it. You will find your way there. Lastly, we have some precautionary measures. Remember that masks are required during your entire time on the campus and that you should keep a six foot distance between your party and other parties. And lastly, if you need to use the restroom, any restroom on campus will be available. But please remember, only two people in the restroom at any time. Finally, what happens if we unfortunately, but hopefully not, get a positive COVID case? Well, if that happens, first... If anyone tests positive, if you are on the church campus, you should contact the church leadership immediately. We will keep your name confidential, but we need to know. So if that happens, 
the in-person gathering will be skipped for the following Sunday, and those who test positive should not return to the church campus until they are deemed non-infectious as per the CC CDC guidelines. What does that mean? It means that there have been 10 days since the symptoms first appeared and that you have gone 24 hours without a fever, without using fever, reducing medications, and there are no other symptoms of COVID-19 and they are improving. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and please visit our website or email the CRC at crc at ccgchome.org.